Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to our AEC Lunch and Learn. Thanks for uh, sharing your time with us today. My name is Eric Cartola, Territory Account Manager here at Katib. With me, I have my uh, friends and colleagues, Fred Ortiz, AEC Solution Engineer, and uh, Mike Carlson, Project Manager and uh, Vault or uh, Data Management Expert. We're going to be with you guys for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes today. Um, as always, feel free to uh, go ahead and type your questions in uh, during our presentation, and we'll do our best to uh, address them. Uh, if not, we'll definitely leave time at the end, five to 10 minutes to uh, circle back and try and answer any questions you guys may have uh, during the presentation. Um, today's topic, Vault and Revit server integration, um, goes on that theme of just really helping our customers uh, design and manage your data more efficiently. And it's uh, one I think it's really important because it goes back to uh, using that single source of truth across a project. And it's one that's particularly relevant for a lot of the customers that we see um, trying to coordinate and really just manage their data across uh, multiple locations, uh, especially when you're working with multiple disciplines, uh, you have E&I providers, architects, civil engineers, uh, et cetera. Fred, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about our uh, agenda for today? All right, thanks, Eric. All right, so as far as our agenda today, we'll begin today's Lunch and Learn by talking about the benefits of utilizing uh, Vault in conjunction with Revit Server on a Revit project. Um, then we'll be jumping into our, our live session where we'll, we'll be touching upon how to add your mapping for the Revit Server folder, um, the Vault project folder, um, how to change some Vault settings to enable Revit family indexing. So if you do manage your Revit families in Vault, you can actually search for them if you enable that setting. Uh, we'll then, then jump into uh, the Vault and Revit workflow, or we'll go through um, sharing a Revit project, work shared project on Vault, and a bunch of steps to get it to work properly with Vault and with Revit server. And then during the, the Revit on Vault workflow, we'll be touching upon some best practices for that as well. And then at the end, we'll have some, some Q&A. So if you can, please type in your, your questions in the GoToMeeting panel, and we'll address those at the end of the presentation we jump to our Q&A session. Okay, perfect. So how to set up a project uh, with Vault and Revit Server, how to integrate those, uh, some best practices on how to use it, and then some right. questions at the end. And then again, going back to uh, really why we chose the topic, it's particularly uh, important for those customers uh, having to manage that data. And uh, a lot of our customers can't really use a cloud solution uh, for certain instances, whether it's a security issue or just right. uh, a cost that doesn't make sense. Um, so if it, they already have that infrastructure in place, uh, Vault and Revit and Vim uh, makes even more sense for them to maybe consider this solution. And then just backing up, um, I know most of the people on here are probably aware of what Vault is, but Mike, why don't you tell us high level, what is Vault? So, you know, high level is it's a central location on a server that uh, is managing your data. Um, you know, so it's it's controlled by a SQL data or some backend information. Uh, it's got a client and a server connection. And, uh, you know, it's really rather than just saving on your network folders, you know, it's a location to save data with extra security. And we'll, we'll talk about some other benefits in just a minute on that. Um, uh, you know, but uh, that's, that's really what it boils down to. It doesn't really add much extra to any workflows or anything like that. It's just where you save the file is a little different. Right. Central place to access and manage Yeah, it's a central location for your project files. And with some companies, like Eric was saying, it, they can, the option of a cloud service or like a collaboration for Revit, it's not really an option. So they got to stick with some kind of on-premise data. Sure. Like Vault. And then Fred, real quick, why don't you tell us what Revit server is? For those okay, so, who's not uh, aware. So Revit, you know, Revit is a building design software, and in conjunction with Vault, you're able to save your, your central models up there. But when you put into play the Revit server, that's more of a, a conduit that allows you to connect to multiple sites or multiple offices or connect to your sub-consultants where they could actually access your, your Revit project from Vault, and you guys can work share in it multiple really, locations. Yeah, it facilitates yeah. the central model exactly. right, among multiple locations. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And then I guess speaking of that, Mike, do us a favor. Tell us a little bit about maybe the benefits of uh, using Vault and Revit server integration. Sure. I mean, you know, we've hit on a couple of them already, but uh, you know, one of the uh, I'll say the this, the benefits or the fits, right, for you and your company. And and one of them is if you're multidiscipline or multi file types, right? So look, if you got, you know, uh, whether yourself or a sub is using Inventor, maybe, or excuse me, not Inventor, but Revit, mm -hmm. um, or, and then you have a sub that's using Civil 3D, 3D. Basically, basically, if you have another sub that's maybe using Plant for kind of the processes and the, you know, the piping and whatnot that goes between buildings, uh, when you start to have all those combinations of things, 
you really need that, again, that central data point, that central management point in right. Vault in order to control all that and have all that. So the, the nice thing about Vault, right, with all the Autodesk products, it's all integrated with all the Autodesk exactly. products, right? So Vault doesn't care about file types, but when it comes to integration, you know, being able to stay inside Revit and work on the Vault files, not have to jump to different windows, you know, and, right. and, and whatnot. Yeah, with the Vault, the vault plugin, right? So that's yeah, the, all the Vault plugins. And plugin. how those changes update automatically. And how the changes come into play automatically. Um, also, the Vault has the technology for replication. So being able to take full sets of this data, so taking this all this vaulted data, and as you guys know, the Revit files are pretty big in right. size, so are Simple 3D and Plant 3D, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to take that data and now replicate it to multiple offices so that everybody has access to it from a local standpoint. So we're not having to download files across a slow connection or VPN right. connection or something like that. So it enables that to, to spread out that data that way. And then once it gets in the vault, we can add additional securities, you know, say, hey, look, this, this file now is, is in a more controlled state. So we've submitted this for our 30% submittal, right? right? So let's take all these and label them like that, number one, so we can find all the information. Mm -hmm. But number two, now we lock the files down because we don't want anybody changing the files. Right. Right. right? Look, this is this is our record of what we submitted at 30% yeah, or preliminary, whatever it may be, right? Um, that, that milestone point. So, so what I'm hearing is, um, Firms, no matter where they are, or as long as they have this integration set up, they can manage that data, they can control who accesses that data at one time, and they have a revision history on that. Mm -hmm. right. And they don't have to work on the cloud, right. particularly if you know, security is an issue. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. yeah, we talked about, yeah, it's it's an on-premise solution, right? So right. you have to have a server, if you're replicating, each site has to have a server, but it's all intranet-based, not internet-based, right. you know, so, um, you know. Not everybody's grasped the cloud yet, especially government, right? They're right. panicked about it. So yeah. you may have, you know, specific rules from a government contract that don't allow for it. Exactly. So that's, that's an option for it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. And it does complement Revit Server as well, right? So with the, all the functionality, functionality of Vault that Mike just talked about, if you once you put the Revit Server intact with that, it opens it up to allow more people to work. Yeah, so files. again, the Revit server is facilitating the central yeah. model. Mm -hmm. So now that you have that central model where everybody can ping and get to yep. the data and, and work on it all at the same time, the, the vault is just now on the back end controlling that file from what we call talked about security standpoint. Right. So, so look, even if the central model, even if we submit this thing at our 30%, lock down that central model because we don't right. want any more changes to it until we have some vehicle to open it up, right? right. You make a change to open it up and unlock it. Perfect. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty good. All right. So that was a pretty quick little introduction and uh, benefits um, description. So now let's get, just jump into our live session and um, let's get this show on the road and we can show you guys what we're talking about, show you a workflow. And um, if you have questions, like we said, just go ahead and um, type them into the Go to meeting, and we'll address them at the end. Um, what we're going to try and do here is just keep this high level. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the stuff here is already been set up. Um, ideally, it should be ahead of time. But um, we're just going to go ahead and show you the basics, how to set up the project, and hopefully, uh, maybe better illustrate some of those benefits we spoke of. Yeah, we're not. We're going to show you all that stuff, but we're not really going to go through and save files here, or save files there, because we don't want you to, to sit here watching um, status bars, right? Because it's going to take some time to connect. So, like Eric was saying, we do have some pre-cooked. Um, files to show you. Yeah, I think I'd lose my lunch if I right. start to see that. <laughs> right, so first up, a little little um, best practice. So before even starting a Revit project using Vault, you're going to want to, if you want to have your families up there to be able to index them and search them on your Vault, you want to be able to turn the setting on. So, right, so first you got to go to your, your Vault, find the Vault you're working in, do a right click, and then we're going to bring up this Revit indexing service. And this right here, what this allows you to do, so first off, it's not, not it's disabled to when you install um, Vault. So what you got to do in here is you got to go to your ADMS council and, and change the settings. So once I go in here and say, yes, I want to enable Revit indexing, um, this will allow me to add my families to Vault and be able to search search them in Vault with the parameters that are specifically um, set for those families. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. That's that's one little best practice. So for example, if I wanted to search, uh, you know, windows or stair rails or I can search, search that size and, anything you want yeah so whatever parameters set in that family with this indexing turned on once you go into vault and search for it it'll, it'll find those parameters you're looking for and find your family you need. okay fantastic okay. all right so we got that so now let me open up my got my vault opened up 
and then we get get Revit going. So, so what we're gonna do is like we talked about, we have some pre-cooked files already. So I'm just gonna kind of run through the steps on how to how this workflow works when working with Revit and, and Vault. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new a new project just to, to keep it simple. So I'm gonna create a new project. I'm maybe gonna choose an electrical project right here and say okay. Hey Fred, while you're doing that, let me ask you, who can, can create a project in Vault? Any, anybody who has access to the Vault, or do we set controls on that? How does that work? That's all permission-based, right? Yeah, yeah, so that'll be all set up beforehand, who has access with Vault by the admin. Yeah, okay. in, in the Vault, you have roles and securities and whatnot. So uh, again, just depending on your login and your Vault. Sure. Okay. All right, so this works either way. So you can start a new project, or if you have an existing project that hasn't been workshared yet, you could do it that way as well. I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and start off with a, a blank project, just kind of go through the, the workflow without um, saving or doing anything like that. So let's just get started really quick. So I got my, my Revit file open, my project's there. I opened it, so now what I wanna do is I wanna go over to my, I wanna save it locally. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this guy locally. And what Fred didn't show you is, you know, ahead of this also, he's, we've already installed a Revit server on a model, you know, so it's a Revit server software anyways on, right. on a machine, right? So that, that those kind of pre-steps have already been done. Uh, yeah. There's plenty of white papers out there telling you how to do it, but uh, just pointing out. Yeah, we're already set up with the ball and the Revit, so everything's all good, like Mike said. So let's go ahead and do that. So I saved my file locally. Now I'm going to go over to my Collaborate tab, and I'm going to make this a, a workshop project. So I'm going to click on my work sets, um, say OK. So there's another, another piece, uh, Fred, why don't you pull up the, uh, the server admin the, on the web? Right. So once once you get Revit server installed, right, there is an admin console for it. Correct. This is where you're going to create your folders um, that are going to exist. So, so you need to build a folder structure that's going to exist in Revit server, and what we'll show you in a minute is then you're going to map that into Vault. To Vault, but, right. Um, but yeah, from the, open up that server admin. Yeah, so, so I got the server admin up right now. And if you look, here's my, my server, and I got my Revit projects folder already created. And then I got my architectural, electrical, and HVAC guys right there too. So when we get back into Revit, we're going to uh, map this to Vault. And let's go ahead and do that really quick. All right, so we go back to Revit. And for me stuck right there. It looks like we got a question from Matt. Um, and yeah, we, I probably should address this uh, a little bit better uh, at the beginning, but uh, Revit server, there is no cost to Revit server. No, Revit, Revit server is free with, with Revit, so if you purchase the suite, it comes with Revit server. So if you own Revit, you have access to Revit server. Correct. Perfect. It's a free service. Okay, so now that I have my, my work sharing enabled, I'm going to do a save as, and this, this is a critical step, so I'm going to go over to my R application and do a save as project. And I'm going to locate my Revit server down here. And that's where we want to save these files. So I got my Revit server right here. Then I'm going to go into my, my vault right here. And there's my folder, Revit projects. And I'm going to go ahead and sa save this to my electrical folder. All right. So when I do that, little um, tip and trick right here is I want to specify my file save options. I want to specify my work set when opening. So down the road, when you're working on a work shared project, you want to link your file to like the architectural model or the mechanical. That way when you open your project, it's gonna, it's gonna allow you to select which work set to open. Because if you have multiple links in your Revit file and you open it, it might take a little, little bit of time to, to generate those work sets and those views. So this is just the best practice to kind of specify your work set you wanna open when you're opening your Revit project. Okay, so in that way I'm not opening everything. Every work set, yeah, you're just opening a specific work set you want. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select specify right here, okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and in here, and this is where I would save my electrical project. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. This is just where I would save it at. And like I said, I don't want to sit here with a bunch of um, status bars waiting for you guys. So that's where I save my project at. So once it's saved, so I'm going to go over to my project, go to my Revit server. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save that to Revit server. Perfect. And uh, why this is going, I'll, I'll point out something too that uh, I know who was at Matt asked about is Revit server included with Revit, right? right. And and um, it also I need to point out from a Vault standpoint, right? Um, while Vault Basic, what we call Vault Basic, kind of comes with all the other desk suites. Really, what's only going to work in a combination with Revit server uh, and and really even Civil 3D, Plant 3D, some of the auxiliary products is Vault Professional. 
So you do need a level higher a level. Of, of vault in order to accommodate this workflow. Right. right, yeah, good distinction there, Mike. All right, so that wasn't too bad, guys. So now I have my file that I just created. I saved it into Revit server. So now when, what I want to do now is I want to go to my vault add-in tab over here, and I want to me log out really quick. I want to log into vault. All right, so once I'm logged into vault, I'm going to take you over to the to the options over here, this guy right here, and this is where we're going to do our mapping. So I've got my vault options opened up on my vault add-in tab, and I go to mapping. And I already have a mapping here, but I'll run you through, through the process once again. So I'm going to go over here to my, my plus symbol. I'm going to map to my Revit server folder. It's right here. Just browse to my, my Revit projects. This is the folder I want to map to. And this, if I select OK, it'll, it'll map it right there. But I'm going to cancel it out because I already did that. So right up here on my folder location, I have my folder map to Revit server. And then the next step would be mapping that folder back to Vault, which is already done for us. So we can keep this um, presentation moving. Yeah. So the idea here is we've built the bridge, right? So yes. This is, this is we've built now connected that folder in Revit server to right. a folder in Vault. And you see here in this screen, right, you can add multiple. Right, so if you have different projects and whatnot, right. you you probably have different mappings to different you know project folders in Revit server versus project folders in Vault. Right, and that's all. That's how you accommodate that, right? Yeah. Now. So right now we're just creating that one one to one relationship, right, from Revit server to Vault. Yeah. All right. So now we got that. And when I go back to sharing, there's a couple of best practice settings as well that we want to go through. So what we want to do up here on the the Vault upload options. We want to turn this no automatic upload on synchronization. Because what that does, when, once you synchronize a central, your Revit model, it creates another file on your vault. So it creates a, a revision or a changed file, right? It, it creates a new version. A new version, yeah, new version. So we don't want to do that every time we see it. We want to do that strategically, maybe once or twice a day, just, just to have it ready for the other architects to come in and link their file to an up-to-date model. So we want to turn that up, turn that off. Also, we want to check this upload on close. So what that means is once we close our Revit um, project down, it's going to upload automatically back to Vault. Okay, that's one setting. And then down here on our visual attachments options, we want to create when adding, have this radio button checked. So that way when we when we do um, create a file, when adding adding files, it's going to create that, that DWF file copy. So if we need to send that off or we need to view it or mark it up, it's it's there. And then our last one, we're going to add to Vault. We're going to, we're going to check this filter by extension. And I'll say okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got the mapping done, we got the settings done. Then we're gonna jump over here to, um, if we made any changes, we wanna perform a seek to central to make those changes. But right now we don't have, I guess we can make a change right now, right? Yeah, so let's just do a little quick on, um, let's see. We'll just leave it, let's just get it like that. So right now if we had any changes to make a perform a central, that'll send it back up. So the next step would be closing down this Reddit project and then checking it back into Vault and saving those changes. So let's just go ahead and close that. And if you see right now on the screen, it's saving to Vault, that file. And that goes back to that setting we checked, right? Saving to Vault when you close the file. Perfect. And that's a, this is an important step when you're first configuring the system, right? Right. Is after you've done the save as and saved it to the Revit server, and you've built that bridge, that map um, into Vault, you actually need to close the file down like Fred's doing here. You can't just continue working, so it's a good note to have. Um, you got to close the file down and then come back and open it from Vault, which Fred, I think is gonna, Fred's going to show you. Yeah. That, that way now it's we create the map, but now we also got to get the file from the Vault you know, to fully make the solution. All right. Yeah, just sort of complete it. You have to close it and then open it up in Vault. Right. And then while we're doing that, I'll answer a question from Chris here. Um, the pricing kind of fluctuates, but uh, this question is, what does Vault Pro cost? Um, right now, it's two thousand dollars for a license. Uh, about ten percent of that is maintenance subscription per year, and you've got another few months to uh, take advantage of that option. Uh, after that, it will be uh, rentals or subscriptions. Okay. But uh, yeah, Chris, we can talk more about that offline uh, if you're interested, and I can discuss the details. All right. So there. That when that went away, now it's actually saved in Vault. So if I, if I go over here to my Vault Pro, do a refresh, 
go look in my electrical folder, there's my file now. So that's what that did. It opened it, it opened it up, saved it, and then sent it to Vault. So now your project's in Vault and anybody can access it on their end. All right, so let me go back to, to Revit really quick. And I'm gonna do an open from Vault. So I'm gonna click on my, my Vault add-in tab, open from Vault right here. And what this does will take me to my, my actual Vault and I can open it from Vault. So I'm gonna go look for that, that file I just created. This guy right here. And so those of you that may be familiar or have used Revit Server, yeah. let's say in the past, right, your process has always been to go open it from Revit Server. Correct. Once you introduce Vault into the equation, your processes are always going and grabbing the file from the Vault. Again, that bridge is already made to the Revit Server, so it understands <laughs> that. Right. But from a from a best practice, or I, it's from an absolute practice, right. you have to go to Vault and get your file out every time you yeah, and that'll be like the daily workflow once you have your, your project set up in your Revit models. So whenever you jump in, jump into the office, get your workstation up, you want to open your pro your project files from Vault. Gotcha. Okay, let's just go ahead and open that. And I'm squinting and searching the queue for questions. A uh, question from Jim I'll go ahead and answer right now is, does every user on the project need a Vault uh, Pro license or Vault license? And I guess the answer is no. Uh, vault licenses are network licenses, so they're meant to be shared. Um, if two people needed access to the software at the same time, that would be uh, two licenses. If uh, they didn't, it, it could be shared. And then, uh, James, same thing I, t I told Chris earlier. Uh, if you have any questions, we can uh, discuss it further offline, kind of clarify it for you. And what consumes the licenses? You saw Fred log in. So whenever you log in, from Revit, from a Vault client. Whenever you're logging into Vault, that that takes the license at that point. Perfect. So yep. and there we go. So see, this is the option. So when I when I set that option up in the best practices to to specify a work set, this is where that comes into play. So I'm just going to open both work sets up. And if you notice, when he's in that open from Vault screen, he's only going into Vault and looking for files. You can't browse to C drive and D drive, and right? Whatever else. It's, it's strictly a look directly into Vault and getting the latest and greatest of the data out. All right, so now that we have our file, file project file saved in Vault, we have it open from Vault. This is like your daily workflow as, work, as far as working on a, a Revit project. So you have your file open, do some work, change some settings in, in, inside, right? So let's say we make a change and we want to sync it back to central. So on this little tab right here on your Vault tab, no upload on the syn synchronize. We could always toggle that off and on. So Let's say I make a, a quick little change to my drawing, and I want to upload it to, to Vault. Just on that, that Synchro Central, I change the setting to make it say Upload on Synchronize. Then I'll go ahead and do a Synchro Central. And this is actually going to push my, my changes back up to, to Vault. Gotcha. And then I'm pulling up a question right here. And I'm trying to squint and see this question. A uh, good question coming in from Train. What is the difference between... Uh, Vault or the Revit server setup versus a uh, tool like ProjectWise. Um, Fred, I think it's you want to answer that. I think they're similar as in the fact that both have the same uh, roles and permission access you can set up. From my understanding, I think Vault handles more data than uh, or different more file formats than uh, well, well, ProjectWise. Vault, Vault's more friendly with Autodesk products, of course, right? So there's seamless integration with Vault and with your your Autodesk products. When you go to project-wise, they do have add-ins and stuff like that, but it's not as seamless as Vault would be with an Autodesk product. Yeah, and they may, and they, and they usually don't. And there is some of the product we talk about the the multidisciplinary mm -hmm. environment, plant using plant or using uh, um, electrical or using you know using using uh, civil 3D. Right. Um, well, I think project-wise does have an, an add-in for civil 3D. It doesn't have one for plant. There, there are a, a few of the Autodesk products that. Uh, it does not have that in for. So. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, good question. And uh, to be honest with you, I think I need to research project-wise a little bit more. I have an understanding of what it does right. from a data management uh, perspective. And again, I think it's similar to Vault, and it's working off the theme right. of giving everyone on the project uh, controlled access at the right time to the right information. Right. But uh, I'm not sure in the details. Uh, I'll look into that train and uh, get back with you. All right. So my file was file was Sequel Central. So let me go back to my, my Vault, check it out, do a refresh. And now you notice we have multiple um, revisions right here. So this is the one I just did a change to, did a Sequel Central, uploaded it, and now I have a new um, version of that file. So it keeps a, it keeps track of all your different versions, and then once you get to that milestone, then you can always set that up to, 
to have your milestone on revision saved. All right, so that pretty much is almost what we have to show you. Let me just go one more thing. So let's just say like we're working on a, a multidiscipline rhetoric project and I want to link in a file from, from, a, from Vault. So the cool thing about the Vault adding is you have this link from Vault tool. So if I open up that link from Vault tool, it's going to bring up this, this dialog box link from Vault. And this is where I could actually go browse to, browse to my Vault and find that, that one file you want to bring in to, to reference. So right here I have my, if I want to bring in my architectural model, I just say link. And it's going to actually link that into my, my file. And what that does, it creates that relationship between those two files. So if you have somebody working offsite in another location, they link to your, your architectural model. So when changes are made in your ARC model, they just uh, reload the latest and they get those changes right to them. And that's the benefit of having Revit Server, even though that work across multiple uh, locations. Now, Fred, I know we have the revision history. Do we get a notification of a change? Do we get a notification of a change? No. In mobile? No. Okay. No, but, no, you, you don't. You can, you can, you can query the database for information mm -hmm. and um, work on it. But uh, um, you know, because that that information is in there, it's in the database, and I'll kind of show you that here in a second. Um, so if I look at this particular, uh, this is the Vault Fit client we're kind of looking through right now, and you can see that Fred has the new file we just put in, but we did have a historic file that was already in there that did that was the non dash two version. And we talked about in the beginning the benefits, you know, so things like marking milestones, things like roles and securities and how you can access things. Well, really one of the, the biggest driver in that is you really have two factors. And you'll see here this column called state. And you'll also see this column, in this case, they, they call it revision. Um, but, you know, think of it more as milestone, uh, right? So this is, this is more your milestone point. So if you look at this particular file and say, okay, it's a work in progress. It's unlocked. It's available for people to work on it, and right now it's in a preliminary. It's working towards a preliminary milestone, sure. right? a preliminary point, right? And now the controls all based are are based around this state. So when I come in here and tell this thing to change state, I can put it into an approved state, or you see there's a review state. So right. you know maybe this is going out for review. It's not approved yet. Well, if you send it out for review, put it in this review state because we probably want to lock it down so people can't make changes to it. And then we can put the rules based on right. that, right, around exactly. it. And then I can change the state and get this thing also now to an approved condition. And then you, in, my, in my scenario, the role I'm logged in as, you know, in review, it was unlocked. But you'll notice here on the far left side that this file is now locked because it's approved at the preliminary milestone. That's okay. for sure. So this file right now, if I wanted to go in and open this and make changes to it, the system work. wouldn't let me. I can view it, I can print it, I can see it, but I can't make changes to it. Right. So in order to work those changes, I have to be able to change the state back to this work in progress. Okay. So remember, we were working towards a preliminary milestone. We hit it. It's been approved now. When I go back to work in progress now, notice what it did. Okay, well, I've hit my point, that preliminary. Okay. Now I'm working towards this next level, right? This next milestone. Mm -hmm. And in my case, and, and these are just configurations. So you can configure states to say what you want, do what you want. You can have multiples as well as revisions. You can do the same thing. I, I built a simple one. It's got preliminary 30%, 60%, 90%, 100% submittal type stuff, right? Yeah. So you'll see here, now I'm working towards this 30% submittal. So all my history is maintained down here as well, right? So I know that, hey, I could roll back. I can view, I can see this file at any point, right? So when you're doing submittals to the government, right, and you, you may get down the path and be at your 100% submittal, well, they might want information based on the 30% submittal. Which right? I think that happens a lot, so. Yeah, and you can jump back to that. Right. So you don't have to create a separate zip file <laughs> and right. put it over on the network over here that, hey, this was our 30% right. submittal and zip it all together. and. Have this bloated save. It's it, that that milestone marking exists. Here. Yeah, but, available. yeah. And what you just talked about is common practice. So this kind of takes away from that sort of um, workflow you're used to, and you kind of move into this vault workflow, which is cool. Yeah. Perfect snapshot in time. We can uh, access the history, see what happened, when, who did it, yeah. uh, how. The, it's a good way to actually see how the project has progressed. Yep. Fantastic. Another quick little widget. I know we didn't talk about we, in, in planning for this webinar. We didn't discuss this, but while I was looking at it, you know, a lot of you may be using Buzzsoft, right. um, you know, to, to collaborate maybe with some subs or other contractors or whatnot. 
So Vault has a link to Buzzsaw, where basically you can, the same kind of mapping we did with Revit and, and Vault, mapped a folder here to Revit server to Vault, right. we can map a folder up to Buzzsaw mm -hmm. and actually have that data sync up to Buzzsaw all the time. All right, so that, that'll come into play if, let's say you're working with another consultant who's not in your Revit, net, Revit server network and you want to send him a, a Revit model, you send it up to Buzzsaw, give him access, and you can get it from there. Yep, okay. exactly. Yep. That works. Yep. Good. Fantastic. So we set up a project. Uh, we showed you how it works. I guess the tools you need to use it. Uh, mm -hmm. Vault, Revit uh, server, and uh, showed you some best practices on uh, what to do while you're in there. Then we also talked about the benefits of Vault and Revit Server, which which would be you can manage your data for multiple multidisciplinary projects. Um, you get access data across multiple locations. Um, you, you do have that on-premise data management versus a cloud solution such as A360 or C4R, which some companies aren't allowed to do, especially governments or military stuff like that. They can't really use that cloud service, so this is a good um, um, application for them. Um, then we talked about the roles and security to control access to data. Uh, we also talked about, or Mike talked about the seamless integration with the Autodesk products. There's more than 30 products that are seamlessly integrated with um, Vault. Uh, we talked about managing the data related to, to milestone deliveries, deliverables such as 30%, um, 60%, 100% design, stuff like that. Uh, we touched upon the revision management, giving you that, that single source of truth, which is what we all want, want to have in our possession. We don't want to be designing off an old model, so with the revision management, you always know which one is that. That single source of truth, right? All right, so Q&A. First one from Alex, and he actually asked us towards the beginning. So does Vault handle only Autodesk data? We work with Bentley slash MicroStation. Uh, Mike, Good right? question. Yeah, no, there, there is. So Vault, uh, Vault can handle any data type, right? So you can put PDFs, HTML, whatever. Right. Now, we're off on the differentiation is, is what's it integrated with? Right, so what do you actually have an add-in for? Fred said the 30 Autodesk products, right? right? Um, but as well as, yes, it is, there is an add-in, there is an integration with MicroStation as well. So that does exist. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was hopeful that uh, answered your question. And I guess that leads us to a, another one that came in from uh, Larry. So Larry asks, Vault seems similar to A360 collaboration for Revit with the BIMDocs tools. Let's try and uh, differentiate them, or what's the distinction? I think the biggest thing I see, Mike, is A360 collaboration for Revit. It's That's only managing Revit models, Revit right. data. You have A360 team, which you can upload other data in there. Right. But uh, Vault is particularly geared towards, going back to what you said earlier, or probably a best fit for companies who are managing uh, data across multiple disciplines. So uh, companies you know, designing a process or power plant, uh, you have civil engineering in there. You've got some structural engineering using Revit. You might have some uh, electrical or you know, plant files. Navis works in there. Vault would handle all of those things, right? Yep. Yeah, and also the, the it's, it's on premise versus cloud, so that's a difference too. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And the, all those security rules you can apply. You know, the the whole life cycle thing that I was showing, right? right. And uh, and the milestone marking, mm -hmm. you can apply to not only the Autodesk files but anything. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Look, you put a Word document in there. You put some sort of you know spec submittal document in there. You can apply all that information right. to that as well. So you get the securities for that too. Yeah. And going, and going back to A three sixty and C four R, there is there is revision management with the Revit files, like you said, but all the other data you add, there's no revision management for that. It's only your Revit files, so that's that's another difference, too. Gotcha, yeah, so, okay. and one, one thing, I know you kind of mentioned it, too, but in Vault, we actually can control who has access to what, right? right. A360 collaboration for Revit. We can all co-author the same Revit model, right. and we can even have revision history just for Revit data, right. but we can't control who has access to what. So right. sometimes if you're working with a consultant, maybe somebody you know, doing the, the sprinkler system, you know, fire protection, they can change their architectural model yeah. technically in A360. It so has, ha has happened. <laughs> and so. causes, causes a lot of headache. Yeah. So yeah, similar, I guess, to going back to a webcast we had, uh, or lunch learn about a month ago, BIM360 docs. There you, go. you can also have controlled uh, access and you can uh, define roles and manage who sees what at what time right. in that. But uh, the big difference being that's cloud-based, this is local. All right, so let's move on to our our wrap-up, our lunch wrap-up. Okay, great, yeah, so next steps from here, um, 
if anything, what you uh, heard today hopefully sounds interesting or sounds like you might be a fit or uh, you're interested in understanding more, feel free to uh, go ahead and reach out to Fred, myself, Mike, any one of us here really on the team can uh, help you kind of figure out uh, if this might be a better fit for you or what next steps we can take. Right. Um, I think my contact information is up there. Feel free to give us a call or a follow up. And again, those of you uh, who answer questions or ask questions today, uh, thank you for your questions. We will follow up on uh, offline to uh, clarify further details. And then we hope to see you two weeks from now, uh, the 20th of April, we'll be uh, introducing what's new in Revit 2017. Yeah. So yeah, I know that's one that we'll uh, get a lot of traction on and we're looking forward to presenting. Yeah. It's a good, good topic and should have a good turnout for that one. Otherwise, uh, thanks again for attending, guys. Uh, hope to talk to you soon.